Today is January 11th. The Yankees have lost a coach to the Mets. They've promoted the first female manager in the minor leagues. Kay and Coney on Sunday Night Baseball, and Jake's going to show everyone his butt. It's the fuck Yankees. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks, brought to you by DraftKings. My name is Jimmy. His name is Jake. In the corner, we have producer BBD. It is a fine Tuesday afternoon in Lockoutville, USA. No baseball news, but the Yankees actually did make some moves. And in Yankee land, there's been some topics to discuss. So we will do those. No, Jake is not on the K-Rod cast. They asked him to join for 10 minutes. He said, I don't wear pants when I do podcasts. Do I have to wear pants? And they said, yes. And Jake said, no. True or false, Jake? Jim, BBD, everyone live in the chat. How are you? Happy New Year. Wow. Can you believe it? Too late. Too late. 20, that shit 2018 out. is here. Uh, Jim, no baseball news. I mean, uh, under a rock much? Uh, did you get your way out from under that rock much, man? Because uh, we got baseball news. A, they're meeting on Thursday, finally. First time in uh, 43 days. So they'll probably just sign the deal. Um, I don't believe that. And then we will continue on with the offseason, sign Correa, trade for Matt Olson and Frankie Montas. Um, How were your holidays? Oh, they were good. Did you guys think about maybe uh, not asking for what you're asking for? No, we actually think we're going to ask for a little more now. Okay, back to square one. Double lockout. Whoa, a little live audio from... That's a live leak. (laughs) <laughs> a live leak of some of the conversations yeah. that's been going on. Uh, man, I mean, I haven't been sleeping since the Chavez thing broke, so I know we got to talk about that. Um, I mean, actually, really cool stuff with Coney and uh, K Rod. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I'll, I will make an appearance on K Rod this year. Confirmed. They'll probably read one of your tweets. You know. I like Jake. He's funny. I, that's how I think your appearance will be. I don't think so. My boy Jake. Ooh, there's a picture of baby. Oh, snap. That was lit. BBD, how are you doing? Doing very well. It's coldest day ever today. Oh, it is cold. I got a hot coffee. That's when you know. Damn. I got a cold one. When you know. Hot coffee, not a fan. Me either. Me either. The window of drinkability is so short. Burning, burning, burning. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Terrible. Warm, warm, warm. Now you got to add ice. Now you're just having an iced coffee. Why don't you just get iced coffee from the start? Open your heart to the warm world, and you're in a sweet place with warm coffee. I don't even drink hot coffee. I drink warm coffee or cold coffee. Yeah, I don't like warm coffee. I like it that perfect hot, but you don't like hot liquids, so it's fair. No. But we both agree the shelf life of iced coffee is forever. Days. Yeah. Days. Days. Where do you want to start, man? Do you want to start talking about Rachel Balkovich? Is that how you say it? We think it's Bal- Balkovic. I know you asked Hoke, and then Eric. Whoa, also put- sources on that. And then Erica also put, like, Baltimore, Balkovitz, Balkovitz, Balkovitz. We just want to say it right, and we're not fully sure. I know. Rachel. Oh, you say, Co- you say Coach, Coach Rachel. Coach She's Rachel Coach, She's manager now. Manager. She's a manager now, so maybe we but can't you can call that. managers coach, right? 
Can you call a manager skipper or does skipper imply male or is that just sexist brain because we've been sexist for so long that when I think of skipper, I think of a male. I think, I think the latter, that. yeah. The latter, yeah. yeah. I should I should change that. Society's done me in. Skip Balkovic. Yeah, that's cool. Sounds like a good outfielder name. I mean, then you're kind of just not even doing the part where we're, we know the first thing. We don't need to skip that one. Yeah. We know how to pronounce it. I skipped the wrong one. <laughs> you did skip the wrong one. <laughs> Skip Rachel, but now it sounds like you're just saying the skipper. Yeah. Skipper is the full thing. This has been a lot of wordplay accidentally. Yeah. I'm out on it. I wasn't ready for it. All right. Good job. The Yankees. Hi, a Tampa Tarpons first uh, female manager of a minor league team. The Yankees hired her last year. She's been around baseball forever. Um, and I think during the lockout, she went to Australia during 2020 and helped there. We have a picture of her with um, Manny Ramirez in Sydney. So me and her can talk about Sydney, Australia yeah. together. Let's see if she's ever fallen asleep to Moby Dick at the Sydney Opera House, because I have, and we can relate to that. That would be relatable, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She was a catcher at the University of New Mexico from 20, 2007 to 2008. That's how you pronounce those years now And mm. when you go backwards. Graduated in 2009 uh, with a degree in exercise science and then got two master's degrees in the same area. Double master. Damn. I got zero masters. Also fluent in Spanish, which obviously is very, very beneficial to coaching in the minor leagues uh, and being able to communicate with every member of the staff. Mm. Man, she's yeah. pretty worldly. I mean, she... I'm on the Wikipedia, so I'm assuming everything's official here, but studied human movement sciences in the Netherlands. I want to do that. You do? I want to do that for, like, 24 hours. I'm I'm assuming she did more than that. Um, no, man, it's cool. I think talking Yanks fans are, are familiar with this name. I, I remember when she first got hired to be a... Uh, hitting coach, uh, and now she takes a managerial position. Uh, I don't know. I'm interested to see kind of how her minor league path continues, right? Like, does she does she want to be the manager? I mean, it's baseball's getting so skill oriented that I I feel like manager used to be the dream. Now, if you're if you're a renowned hitting coach or pitching coach or something like that, that feels like the much sweeter gig. Um, but either way, I mean, minor leagues, I think for a lot of people, you're, you're figuring out some of the stuff you're like, and this is going to be pretty awesome, unique experience for her. And, you know, I, if you're not rooting for the Tarpons to win the title, then are you a Yankees fan? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're rooting against them, I think you're probably not a Yankees fan. That'd be a little messed up. But if you're completely indifferent, I think you can still be considered a Yankees fan. Okay. BBD, your thoughts on the matter? I just, they clearly trust or she's going to be in charge of some high-profile prospects. That's where the Marsh no, is. No, on, uh, on Tarpon fandom. On Tarpon fandom. Oh. Yankees fandom. Oh. The Yankees fandom. Yeah, you, I mean, you can not, not care at all. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Because it's... Low A. Now what about the prospects? Jason Dominguez is there. Mm. I think Trey Sweeney's potentially starting the year there. He was a first-round pick last year. I um, wonder if J Jason Dominguez starts there. He might start at after spring camp, I guess, depending on how that goes. Yeah. He might he might go straight to high A in, in Hudson Valley. I remember when we were visiting Hudson and we were asking, like, are you ready for that? And they were like, we just, and I think they said something along the lines of, we just hope they give us time to be ready. <laughs> hmm. Like, Don't like they were, I think they were saying, like, we hope we start the season so we can, you know, prep and promote. Right. And be ready for the wave of people and the promotions and all that. And it's not just like, you know, they're sending them up and then it's a mad dash for the next day. So if they're, that's how, if that's how it works. I think he did all last year at low A, right? So I think he might go straight to high A. Dominguez. I'll double check. Usually the way the Yankees do stuff is like they 
I think they typically would have the guy at least start the year at uh at low. Yeah, a. it could be. He did like the rookie ball stuff for a week and then finished the year at high A for forty nine games. We'll probably do like two weeks there. Maybe if one season starts first, just start him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one coach that the Yankees hired. Another coach got poached. Okay, enough wordplay. Because um, I know you also were saying this rumor that Eric Chavez wasn't Roman ready. I don't know. I didn't say that. You didn't say that. I think I think he's always Roman ready. All right, we'll have to check the tape on that. Jim, I'll actually tell you why he's not Roman ready, because it's getroman.com slash yanks. Um, yeah. Oh. He changed his promo code on us, so he's out. So when he's having a flopper in the bedroom, if his, if his uh, okay, we'll stop using Eric Chavez. If you are having some of the problems we were just saying about Eric Chavez, same problems Chavez is having. having <laughs> allegedly, not allegedly have. There's rumors. Get off Chavez. Yes. There was rumors about him in the bedroom that got to us, so we were relaying them as media members. <laughs> um, if you want your wiener to work and it's not working, I would go to getroman.com slash yanks. You'll speak to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional about ED and get $15 off your first month of treatment. It's straightforward, convenient, and discreet. Simple. Get Roman.com slash Yanks. $15 off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're Roman ready. You want it, you're going to want your bat to hit at the plate, is what I tell people. You don't want to yank them. Do you want a really hard, stiff bat, or do you want a really floppy pool noodle for hitting a baseball? Stiff bat. Yeah, man. And I gave it and I gave it thought. Yeah, man. And maybe that's what got Chavez the job with the Mets. Dude, the Mets are coach poaching. Wow. Too easy. They are. Well, wow. I don't know why, because early before the lockout, all the rumors were the Nets get denied and no one wants the Mets job. And why does nobody want the Mets job? And now they got Scherzer. And they got Buck, and they got all their good guys, and they're like, we're changing the narrative. And they're like, let's really change the narrative. And they're going, and they're coach poaching. And they say, all right, who's a man, who's a guy that people think can, uh, you know, is a new signee or will really, like, grow and be good? Like, let's go offer him more money in a little higher position, see if we can't get him to change his mind. So they got Chavez from the Yankees, and they just got denied by the Padres mm. – uh, to interview their bench coach, um, Ryan Flaherty, who is respected around the league. And the Padres say, ah, 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 we know what you coach poachers are up to. Not us. We saw what you did to the Yankees. So Chavez is gone, man. It's they messed up, him. man. I really had I had him circled. I I thought he was kind of the difference maker. Yeah, like I was kind of, I was counting rings. I'll be honest with you uh, when we brought Chavez in. But uh, no, I guess the part, so hey, if you're pretty lost, Eric Chavez is now the hitting coach for the Mets after he accepted a hitting coach for the Yankees. So, I mean, hey, that's kind of winning. <laughs> got, got the promotion without uh, without having to do that job. So good for him, I guess. Uh yeah, I guess the part that's really weird for me is, like, if you're getting your coaching staff and hiring guys, like, I don't know, like, you're signing up for a massive commitment. Um, Like, Boone bringing in Eric Chavez, like, you're going to be, like, with that guy every day for 200 days a year, pretty much. And, like, you need to trust their insight and then... I don't know. That's kind of instantly gone. So, and there's such the web of baseball. Like, we talk about it on Talking Baseball a lot. But how everybody's connected and this, that, and the other. I don't know. It was just, it's kind of funny. Mets Mets are killing us this offseason, Jim. And you're mad. 
Oh. Yeah. Haven't the Yankees um, wanted him? Or hasn't he been part of the Yankees? When he... I, mean, I, I have it now. He was, he was assigned special. Chavez was also a special assignment scout scout mm. to Yankees GM Brian Cashman back in 2015 while Epler was the organization's assistant GM. So he's really an Epler guy. Mm-hmm. And Epler's with the Mets now. Mm. Epler brought him over. He was in the Angels front office. Every year Epler was with the Angels as well. So I think it's an Epler thing. And Epler signed him to the Yankees in 2011. So he's an Epler guy. So Epler goes to the Mets and he says... Hey, I'll come get you. And Ryan Flaherty is a Buck Walter guy. So, I mean, I was like 50-50 joking about the coach poaching. Those are the reasons they went and they want those two guys because they're very connected to the, the new staff that they brought in. So, still out there coach poaching. And so, the other thing, uh, funny is not the right word, but uh, Chav- Interesting. Chavez was the third Hit hitting coach, right? It was Dylan Lawson, Casey Dykes, and Eric Chavez. Um. So yeah, we need a third. We need a third hitting coach, and this is big stuff. So I'm, I'm on this. <laughs> Give it to a Rod. Well, mm, he's busy, dude, and that is on a good su- transition. On Sundays, he goes Chavez to the stuff. booth. Let's well. He goes to, uh, not the main booth. He goes to the booth with K. A booth. I have a question. Okay. Are we done with the Chavez talk? Uh, just I think the Yankees because the two other guys they they added to the major league coaching staff this off season are like promoted from the minors, didn't play in the big league. So Chavez was supposed to be a guy who's played MLB baseball. Yeah. They want to replace. They still wanted a guy like that. So there's names circulating. Yeah, I think they'll add Trumbo. Mark Trumbo. Mark Trumbo. Yeah. Yeah, those are the two names uh, that have been, there's been like articles written about. Is Trumbo being a hitting coach somewhere? I think he, the first time I heard about it was yesterday, and I think I looked it up and he was. Might be with Baltimore. Like Baltimore. Maybe he just played. I feel like he played with Baltimore last year. Um, so yeah, and, so, the, and the Angels. So is that the good news here that we're gonna get like a X kind of MLB guy that we're gonna be like, oh yeah, Dude, Trumbo. Trumbo doesn't fit the bill. You're out on Trumbo. I don't want to be rude to Trumbo, but yeah, I'm out on. That's almost like how Trevor Plouffe says like he can't go be a hitting coach because it need to be someone of stature. If you're the, Whoa. if your whole vibe is like. A guy who played. A little rude to Mark Trumbo. Yeah, I, I guess uh, if he's like a hitting coach in the minors, then like. His Wikipedia doesn't say awesome. it. It doesn't necessarily mean either way. 35 yeah. years old. They like him young. 218 career homers, two-time All-Star, led the league in home runs in 2016, Mark Trumbo. Sure. They have the guys with experienced coaching resumes on the hitting coach staff, so if he's just a guy... I have no idea if Trumbo is well-respected around the league or not, or or if anything. I have no idea. This is a name that does nothing for me personally. I'm not a guy <laughs> that's going to get hitting lessons from him, so... Yeah. But in my opinion, doesn't matter. Yeah. Be someone cool. I mean, he was always on teams that I didn't respect, so mm. that might be it. Like, he was on the Orioles and the Angels, and none, neither of those teams were, like, a threat, and he was never one of the players that was a threat. Wow. You know, sometimes, like, Trout or, like, other players are like, well, yeah, he's good, but that team's I think his, Stop making me be rude to Trumbo. Man, I don't I know his, enough about him. Uh, I don't think he's a great option for hitting coach based on nothing at 2016 all. 2016 Orioles, you're you're going to get some guff for I think that, that was man. a good team. I think his first couple wow. years the Angels were still hanging on wow. before they stopped competing. Angels. Like 2011 Angels, they almost 90 wins, second in their division. Wow. I mean, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, Mark Trumbo's family watching this. Hey, Mark Trumbo's about to sign with the Yanks. What podcast do they have? Oh, we should listen to this one. Wow. I'll bring him on. I know nothing. It could be great. I'm now rooting for Mark Trumbo. Uh, I'm also rooting for one thing in my life and one thing alone. I don't have much. But, Jimmy, I purchased an NFT. Autograph.io, their Derek Jeter, the captain collection. It's still available now. There's a marketplace for them. And actually today, so it's a mystery box. There's some that are super rare. That's what I probably have. There's others that are just damn cool. Less rare than the one I got because I'm an NFT killer. Um, Man, it's on the marketplace.com at draft marketplace.draftkings.com to browse the full collection. They have collectible bat, glove, baseball, helmet, cleats, uh, audio segments of Jeter's Hall of Fame speech. I'm like 3 p.m. I set the alarm in my phone. I can't wait to see what I've what I've got. Actually, I might save it for Wake and Jake on Thursday. So I'll just now I have to turn off. I'm gonna leave the alarm on my phone and then I'm just gonna be itching because I'm gonna want to see my Derek Jeter, the captain collection from Autograph. Tom Brady's involved. What in time this. on Thursday? I think I'm gonna and uh, release it on Wake and Jake. Someone tweeted at that, tweeted me at that, at that at me. What? Hold on. Yeah. You're gonna re- open the mystery box. You and choose reveal when what's you reveal it. it. Okay. It's I think eligible we're doing talking Yanks open. earlier on Thursday. Okay. So I don't know if that changes your plans. I didn't you know. Might if it was have the to time talk about the that. Date. Yeah. Um, but we'll probably save that for afterwards. For now, um, the Derek Jeter, the Captain Collection, marketplace.draftkings.com. Browse the full collection. Enough, Mark Trump. You'll get it. Jake's an NFT guy. I mean, it looks cool. I'm excited for you. I'm excited to open it out. Thank you. Thank Are they you. sponsoring the next Talking Yanks? Because it seems like a great time to open it then during the read. Uh, According to my records, nothing's on the schedule. But stay the hell away change. from my NFT. That's my retirement plan. So, kindly. I just bought it from you. Nope. You can't. You can't change what my brain says. Ooh, here we go. Twenty twenty two. Um, like let me live my reality. You want to do Coney? You want to do Rod? Uh, it's all the same, I think. Okay. It's uh, ESPN changing up Sunday night baseball and making it um, Sunday night Yankees baseball. So <laughs> it's a credit to Yes Network getting all their uh, staff poached to go to Sunday night baseball. It's a poached app, man. This is a big credit to Yes. They got Coney, who's going to be uh, the color commentary on Sunday night baseball now. And then there's going to be uh, sister programming, if that's still the correct term, like the Manning cast, but it's called the K-Rod cast with Michael K and Alex Rodriguez doing, I'm guessing they're going to have a lot of guests and, 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 and just, it'd be very interested how that's going to play because A-Rod's been doing color commentary for a long time. And Michael K has been doing play by play for a long time, but they're the concept of a second the second like Manning cast is that it's just conversation and interviews and not a play-by-play guy and a color guy, but ESPN did a play-by-play and a color guy. So I wonder if they're going to slip into that. If they're not, if it's as casual as the Manning cast, because they keep comparing it to the Manning cast. Are they going to be wearing suits? I'm super curious about how that one's going to go down. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think, Either of us are worried about Kay in a biased way or a non-biased way because he does the radio show. I mean, he's done Yankeeography interviews. So, like, casual sports conversation and doing interviews, like, Kay's going to crush that. A-Rod's the complete wild card in all of this, as he always is. Um, y- yeah, if I mean... It, what If it's A-Rod, like, breaking down swings in the game, it'll be fantastic. If it's A-Rod continuously talking about how much everyone should bunt, it'll be that half of it will be a bummer, like it was when he was in the main booth. 
Yeah, I mean, A-Rod's going to be weird, and that's that's just a fact of life at this point. But um, for me, I, I guess the part that's scary is that it's, it's on-the-fly conversational reacting and that's the part A Rod's bad at. A Rod's preparation is world class. Like whenever it comes to baseball or even the Sunday night baseball, like you'd hear his some of his things he'd have planned, uh, and you know what a player does, good or bad, and you're like, wow, that's actually that's really good. Like that's great insight. I see why you're one of the best baseball players ever. Then once baseball goes off script, which every game does, that's when you get those weird A Rod moments where I know you've poked around and been like. Did he ask the producers to do that? Um, so that's the only part uh, that that I'm nervous about. I mean, big believer in K. There's going to be a lot of guests. Yeah, you just wonder where A Rod lands in the whole thing. And I mean, Manning cast is the new like sexiest word in sports. So um, uh, K K is really good at asking the prodding questions like that's what he does when he's with Coney and O'Neill so well is ask them the questions like as a hitter from a hitter's point of view from a pitcher's point of view and like gets them to gives them the lane to reveal that insight but A-Rod yeah I mean if if it's strictly baseball that's great A-Rod's just an odd guy um rooting for him it's an uphill battle I think whenever the Yankees aren't in the game and when the Yankees are in the game because the world hates Yankees fans and Yankees stuff. So they got to tackle that monster, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I think ESPN's at the point where clicks and ratings. I mean, we, you know, we had a NFL game that most of the people watching were, were praying for a tie just for the chaos that ensued with it. And I don't know. I mean, the Yankees are the Yankees. The, the, the the bad stuff that comes with that I think are is overshined by the good stuff of, you know, getting that job title and you know being being able to do it. So, um, I will say this: a lot of people tuned into Sunday Night Baseball for the same reason last year, for the same reason they tuned in for the tie. They wanted to witness something weird. Now, Zay Rod. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you. I mean, I used to tune in last year to Sunday Night Baseball just to be like. What's A Rod saying now? Yeah, but not in a not in the way ESPN wanted me to. No, no, no. Um, and that's where uh, I think it spins over to the good side of this is our guy Coney. Uh, Do you have the Mookie Betts soundbite, BBD? Look. His name is Mookie Betts. I said, Poppy, can he play baseball? He said, Man, can he play baseball? Baseball. Rizzo! I saw that one going around Yankees Twitter the other day. Yeah, it's just, it's wild. It's wild. Um, Coney, on the other hand, is kind of exactly, we've talked about it. He did playoff games a few years ago. I think it was they were like the games on FX. I remember him doing Houston games, I think. And Michael Kay, who we've just talked about a lot as well, you know, Kaster's hilarious. When he wants to deliver a point, he will deliver that point. And he said many times over and over that he thinks David Cohn is genuinely the best in the sport at doing the color commentary of baseball games. And ESPN hires him to now do the sun the Sunday night baseball. Uh really excited for Coney, who's been super cool with us. Um, and he really is like we we click around to a lot of games whether it's John Boy doing breakdowns or me and Noodle on the couch late night you know flipping to Jake Snakes or whatever game is on. You turn on some baseball broadcast and it's like holy crap! You turn on a Pittsburgh game and you're like, what year is it? Um, you know they're they're talking about the Industrial Revolution. So Coney coming in and being able to do the fun Coney stuff, you know, partying with the the Mets and the Yankees in the 90s and the cerebral pitching stuff. And also, like we were talking about resumes before with Mark Trumbo always, uh, Cy Young in the back, like at one point was the highest paid pitcher in baseball. Like David Cohn is David Cohn. Um, and I think, like, knock on wood, that should be, like, great for the sport that he's doing Sunday Night Baseball. 
Who? There's a. It's an AL Central team. Whose broadcast is so bizarre? And I never really knew this until I started making the breakdowns, and I would grab footage from every different team and like like listen to like a full inning to get like the information. I think it's the Tigers. I don't want to speak at a yeah. turn. It's not the White Sox, but the Royals. It's one of those two. And I don't know if they changed recently, but it was like wild. Yeah. I think it's the Royals because they got into all the beefs with the White Sox. Yeah. It was the Royals booth at one point when like they were getting fights with Tim Anderson was just so, I don't know, not, not enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if you sat next to that person at the game, you'd be like, come on, dude, like lay off a little. <laughs> Can we just enjoy the game? Yeah. That was the vibe. Yeah. Yes. Does a good job of that. I mean, obviously people, non Yankees fans critique and even Yankees fans critique because you know, you, no one hates Yankees fans like Yan- Yankee fans, but like they bring excitement. Yes. Network. I mean, actually the production is awesome. There's a lot of really good ones. They're one of them. So, we are going to miss half of Coney's games now. He does like 100 the last couple of years due to COVID. Now he's doing 50. So you got Kenny gone. You got Buck not to be. Buck didn't do like in the booth, but he was in the in the studio a lot around. recently. You got Kenny gone. Um, Lighter left recently. Which Coney's I mean, down to 50. Coney's down to 50. So, hey, good for Coney, good for baseball, good for ESPN. Uh, but, yeah, Yes Network, it's kind of, who are they going to take a make a bet on, Jim? Well, let's see. For play-by-play, I think we were interested in this. I guess I can and, ask Kay. And I would bet at DraftKings Sportsbook, oh. an official sports betting partner of the NFL. They're kicking things off with a huge offer, counting down to Super Bowl 56. Wow. Not a great number, but. It's higher than other numbers. Customers can get 56 to 1 odds on any wildcard team to win their game. Bet just $5 and win 280 in free bets if your team is victorious. $5 on any playoff game at the DraftKings Sportsbook, and you get $280 in free bets, bets if that team wins their game. Maybe the Chiefs playing Steelers and Big Ben. I don't know. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code JOHNBOY. 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team. Bet $5. You'll win 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's promo code JOHNBOY at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Who's your bet to do more play-by-play? I think you still have Ruko. I don't know what he's up to. Um, can ask him. We have K. Flash is like the third. A Kenny was the third as like a play-by-play guy. I think now it's it's Flash is the third. I don't think they have anyone else that does play-by-play besides those three. So that they might still be able to cover games with the three of those guys. And then and then who's going to do color cuz it's O'Neal and Cone, and the last two seasons, they did, like, all of them because you're doing remote remote booths and weird stuff. Obviously, Flaherty can do color as well. Who else has been color commentary? O'Neal, Coney, Flaherty. The other name that we dug up in the office was Jeff Nelson. He did a few games a, a couple years ago. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it's going to be someone totally new. Uh because, yeah, I mean, Ruko for, for any of K's obligations, which, you know, should should change a little bit with the Sunday night K-Rod. Uh, you know, Ruko is obviously the easy plug-and-play there. We talked about, you know, whether it's missing a couple road series or however they do it. I don't know how Sunday night baseball is going to do K-Rod. Is that going to be in New York? Is that going to be at the games? No idea. Um, so that'll be something to track a little bit. But we obviously, we, we've got a guy there. Um, I mean, they've got to be bringing in someone new, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. I think that the K-Rod will be in Connecticut. Would make sense for everyone except A-Rod. Because that's how they did, like, that's how they did Sunday Night Baseball last right. year. Right. 
Um, so I still think that's where that'll be. So which, 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 my our question was: Does that mean that K is out for all weekend road series, or would he do Friday, Saturday on the road, then fly to Connecticut to do Sunday night baseball? Like maybe if that next series is going to be the Yankees home series, that's pretty doable. Probably yeah. have to get creative. I don't know. Then. He said he's not going to miss a lot of games. So who? They're going to need some more color commentary, guys. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think uh, who are – like, obviously, you heard me say CC yesterday. I mean, he's he said he's never going to wear a suit. He does his own – he mixes it up with MLB Network. I mean, it's got to be – it's got to be on the Yes Network's mind, right? I mean, Ruko and CC, like, that that whole deal. Um, But, you know, that's – Yeah, I'm looking at a list. Just I got guessing. Cone, Flaherty. Trying to find uh, play by play, or color commentary guys. Nelson, O'Neill, Nav Wells listed. He did a couple games like two years ago or something like that. So yeah, they're gonna need some films. I wonder. Do you have anyone that you'd want it to be? I mean, obviously the kids were thrown around Nick Swisher because he's high energy and crazy. Um, and he does bro. He does stuff. So media stuff. I wonder yes, how it he works. Does studio stuff. I wonder if they say like, yeah, we'll pick him up for twenty games. I mean, is this another way for them to get Singleton out of retirement for a third year straight? <laughs> More canny, baby. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's a good chance that there's like that's happening. Ken Singleton will be calling yes games this year. That's without a doubt. Uh, get ready. How many games? Ha- yeah. Um, it's funny. How yeah. many games has O'Neill done without Coney? Like, what if they get another pitcher to? Re- I think they would. They probably should get a pitcher to replace Coney. Oh, I like that. So you, ha- so you have that dynamic, and then the uh, the clear option is CC if he wants to do it. Yeah, he said he won't do the suit. I mean, Yes Network is getting better with that. So haven't they? Haven't we heard that they've begged Andy Pettit for years, and he's always said no. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, they- that makes a ton of sense. But like that. Like, if we're doing actual rumors, like they've literally have, uh, said that they've asked Andy Pettit and, to do it, and I think he like messed. I know what I do. Spring training game once a couple years ago, and mm. everyone loved it. What's your? What I know you? what I do. Pettit does every Gumby game. <laughs> yes, <laughs> perfect. I mean, it adds up. <laughs> More of a Sterling Hitchcock for me, but um, Clemens comes in to do call games. Mm. They have a rotating. Bartolo Colon calls in to do uh, Nestor games. Rotating cast for the Yankees. Pitcher rotation. matchups. Okay. Yeah. That's that would be changing the game. Yeah. Innovation. Innovation. Um. Relaxation. Innovation. The people of Granderson, young, Grandy, young, one of them. Better recent player candidates, not Chris pitcher. Young or Granderson. Ooh, Chris Young. Uh, it's Chris hard for me to Grand. come. Does Chris Young do stuff. I think Granderson. Yeah, does, with the Rangers. At least does. Isn't like, he the GM of the Rangers? Different yeah, Chris, Chris Young, Young outfielder. Granderson does like Fox stuff. Oh. And, like he's always been. Yeah. Just, like, good with media. Um. I can't get over my idea. Any idea you guys present won't be better than my idea. Sure. Uh, the execution, which you're a big execution guy now. I, O'Neal was doing games from his ho- house. Yeah, it's, I Paul mean, O'Neal Mark Burley and never Buck sh- Showa- Mark Burley never shook off a pitch. Buck Showalter was doing remotes. If Buck Showalter and Paul O'Neill can do remotes, you can get Bartolo Colon on a cell phone, Andy Pettit, wherever he is, to just... Be the guys. Who else is part of the staff? Tyone? Who would that be? I don't know. I don't know. Javier Vasquez. Is he in jail? I don't know. <laughs> Tough thing not to that say that if that... he's not. Yeah, it is. 
It is really tough. It's really tough if he's not. Are you thinking of Esteban Loiza? Maybe. Yeah, no, I, I just think Javi Vazquez, Vazquez. It, look, it looks like he does work with the PA. <laughs> 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 not in prison. <laughs> we don't know. Sergio Mitre, I, th- I think, is in prison. We always I end up he's... here. Sergio Mitre, Felipe Vasquez. I'm sorry. Sorry, Javi. <laughs> I still don't think you're a fit for Tyone games. I'm sorry, but my stance isn't changing. That's not going to do it. Pedro Martinez's cousin for Davy games? Yeah, it's an option. And I just think we out. think on this a little more. Yeah. Because we're all over it. it but is, bottom line, get petted. It is so funny that whenever this happens, everyone busts out the biggest names. Like, so I saw people throwing out Jorge, and it's like, Jorge is Jeter's right-hand man with the Marlins. Like, he's, yeah, not, yeah. he's not leaving that. Um, Guardy, maybe player, player broadcaster? No, you don't want someone miserable. Mic him up while he's in left? CC covers all my bases. He can give you the intensity yeah. of call, the lefty of um Gumby, the crafty of Nestor. So it seems like CeCe's just kind of the guy. Yeah. It's got to be, right? Yeah. Give you They're a savvy take. Him and Ruko. He, know, he knows the guys. Him and Ruko. Yeah. We've done it. Congrats, done. CeCe. And then you get petted for like 20 games here and there. Because, well, come on. Would so, and it will. Let's put your rotation matching pitchers on the back burner for now. Phil Hughes could be Tyone just for now. Phil Hughes could be Tyone. Could we do? Are we open to them doing like if the Yankees go to Houston? Well, that's kind of a big series, but if Andy Pettit called like those three games and that was kind of it, like we're fine with that, right? I care. Yeah, I, I contractually, I don't know like the business end right, for them, gets, but the. The public, yeah. Okay. If, if if you're telling me I get any pettit for one series or zero, I, I'll take the one series. So if this year, yes, was using it as like a tryout year and we're going to get different three-game sets from 5X players, we're we're good with that. Yes. Okay. I, um, I just like Andy Pettit's voice. Do you yeah. have a soundbite of Andy Pettit talking? Mm. BBD. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> Pull up just YouTube like Andy Pettit talk and then play whatever you find. I'm going to YouTube that. YouTube Andy Pettit talk. Triceratops! Yankeeography Andy Pettit, 46 minutes. I don't know. He probably doesn't do his own chatting in that. It's not a. Yeah, let's see. Okay, we might have him on. Oh, God. I just. I screwed my dog. Oh, here he is. He's with Rod. You know, until after the game, it was just amazing to say you can't, have, you just can't anticipate what it's going to be like. The emotions, the adrenaline, and uh, it's a different monster playing here and pitching here. And uh, these fans obviously make it a great place to play. Okay, guys, I found it. I don't know what you guys have been doing, but I found it. I'm going to message it to BBD right now, and it, it's Pettit talking about when the Yankees signed Cole and how Pettit was part of that process. And BBD has left the studio. Yeah, I've got bad news for you. Um, I sent it to BBD, and he you just left. played some Pettit. Were you listening to that or no? I heard "Let's Go Yankees." That's all I could hear. Yeah, that's passion, bro. Was that Pettit? Pettit was talking in between those. Oh no! I, and his I accent was clap. beautiful. It was pretty good. I just good. heard a lot of the let's go Yankees and the clapping. You were on search mode. Let's see if BBD can get your clip going. I was also playing my own audio. Yeah. There's a lot going on in my head. Yeah. Just looking. Nice. nice Where'd hat. you send it? Nice hat on today. In the chat. On, on the on the rendezvous. 
Ah. Mmm. Chat. Wow. Can't play. So I send things to Beavers on here. It's the easiest way. Brand. You hungry, Jake? Um, a little. Me too. A little. I haven't eaten anything yet today. Made myself some eggs. Ooh, how'd you make them? Um, I made like a little a mix between scramble and omelet. I don't don't know where the line is. Just put them in the pan and ate them when you wanted Andy to. Andy Pettit out there true. with them to be it's part of the conversation. Cheese. How impactful was that? I imagine you might have felt like an 11 year old again. I did initially at first, for sure. I mean, um, yeah, I think he's certainly one of my favorite Yankees. Probably the city, one of the city's favorite Yankees. It sounds uh, like Paul. And That's he tends Paul. To win, uh, if not, uh, maybe he I messed up the link. October. Now I'm over it. Uh, I know the meeting was November, but we can, you know, when when Andy when Andy pitches anything, uh, whether it be to come to the Yankees or a game. Uh, uh, in the I like listening to call. W, yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, so that's what you said. So yeah. that was Garrett Cole talking about Andy Pettit's pitching Stakes. voice. Yeah, hi. I enjoy them. Cole's voice is wild. <laughs> that's your voice? <laughs> Sounds like a cartoon. <laughs> He's good. He's good. All right. Andy Pettit and CeCe in the booth. That's huge. That's huge. Announced. Name everyone you don't want to see in the booth. Ooh, who do I not want to see in the booth? Again, I usually get in trouble because I, I say he's one of my favorite players when he when he played, but it's probably Chad Curtis. Yeah, I don't want to see him in the booth. Yeah. Felipe Vasquez. John Rocker. Euclid. Nice guy, oh, but I don't think I'd I don't damn. think I'd want to. I don't think I'd want to see him in the booth. <laughs> Tough group to get lumped with. I'd like to have a beer with you, but I don't want to hear him in a, on the yes game. Russell Martin? I feel like you've always had a This is Andy right. Pettit. Welcome to SteinerSports.com. If you want to make sure you're getting my authentic product, look for the Steiner hologram. <laughs> I want to hear Andy Pettit talk, not read out loud. <laughs> Eric is sending me links. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Andy Pettit reading. You're saying you better reading something you don't want to. I didn't hate it. Um, uh, I was gonna say something else, and I forget. All right, Joe Torre. <laughs> Joe Torre works for MLB, right? Didn't he retire? <laughs> Here's Pettit talk. Faith, man. I mean, my faith in, the, faith in the Lord helped me to be able to to relax and to be calm and to really feel like I was a winner no matter what happened. And then, of course, early success in my career. I had failures in 96 in game one, but I was able to come back in, in game six in Atlanta and pitch a big game. I was always able to go back to that game and just be able to relax and be able to, you know, calm myself down. And then just the people around me, having great players around me, gave me an awful lot of confidence also. Andy Green. Dude, I love athletes. I had my failures one game, was this one game this yeah. one time. And whenever I need to remember all my failures in life, I think about that one game. That one game. It's not specific to Andy Pettit. It's specific to every highly, highly successful athlete. It's like, yeah, I had my <laughs> failures. Oh, it's one inning, got rocked. And it, I always remembered it forever. It's like, well, fuck, dude. You remember the lows better than the highs. I don't think that counts as having. I don't think that counts as having your failures. So <laughs> I live. So that's the talking yanks app. I really need to show you guys a picture from the <laughs> clip that I just played. Okay, there was a big BBD giggle at one point. Um, so another just one of the people we're talking to is on on the panel with him. And it's A Rod, and that's the face he was making the whole time mm. Andy was talking. Just uh, the A Rod face, yeah. K better be ready for that. Just staring tight. Is the sun in his eyes? No, it looks no. like it's on the other side of the. He's kind of just doing my hat face. That's if you watch A Rod. What you saying, enough, Andy? <laughs> that's the face he makes. Failures. Oh, I had failures too. I zoomed in on my screen to see that face, and now I can't zoom out. And mm. It's just an awful time. Tight. Very tight. 
I don't know what happened. Hey, that's the episode. Thank you guys very much for joining us. I think we have. Do we have anything planned for next week, BBD, or is that for? T- I thought talking baseball, voicemails, talking baseball. Do we have anything uh, planned? We don't have an official plan for Thursday, but I think we might do a call for voicemails thing. So yeah, let's Feels hear like from the people. Idea. But but we'll I'll, we'll prompt you. Wait for a tweet. Also, check out Coney's podcast, Toe in the Slab, because they had Jamison Tyone on today. I haven't listened yet because it came out today, but. I think he talks about his recovery and all that, and it's a current Yankees pitcher talking to David Cohn. So if you're listening to this podcast at this point in the episode, I bet you'd like that one. Mm. So go check it out. And remember that Jake loves you. Mm. That's it. Any last words, Jake? Go Yankees. Tell them, Grandma. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees.